So in our last video, we looked at factoring quadratics, right? And of course, uh, among all the various factoring formulas that you know, quadratic formula made an appearance, right? This is probably our most famous formula for factoring. Uh, but there are a few other formulas that pop up from time to time, okay? One of the ones that comes up more often than you might think is the difference of squares formula. So the difference of squares formula says that if you have x squared minus a squared, you can factor that as x minus a times x plus a. Okay, That's your difference of squares. Let me clean up that a a little bit. There we go. Okay, so difference of squares um, comes up fairly often, sometimes just simply in factoring, right? So for example, somebody gives you x squared minus 4, and you say, oh yeah, I know what that is. It's x minus 2 times x plus 2, right? Um, or, or maybe they give you something like x squared minus 3, and you're like, well, hang on a sec, 3 is not a square. Well, true, it's not a perfect square, but it's the square of something, right? We're working over the real numbers. We can have irrational values, right? 3 is the square of something. It's the square of root 3. So we can factor that as x minus root 3 times x plus root 3, right? So we can do difference of squares. Uh, one of the other places where you might run into this is actually using it sort of in reverse to get rid of something like, a, say, a x minus root 3 um, or, or a root x. So you might do it in something like, say you have the following. Let's say you have x minus, oh, let's say uh, 4 over root x minus 2. And you don't like having that root x in the bottom. You want to get rid of it, right? So how do you, how do you get rid of that root x? Well, one of the things you can do is say, hey, you know, I just, I just saw this example here. Sure, the root was on the 3 here rather than on the x, but I have this difference of squares thing going on. So if I multiply by the, the same thing but the opposite sign, I'm going to square both of the terms, right? So if I take this and I multiply by root x plus 2, that's going to that's gonna get rid of the, of the square root. Of course, I can't do it on the bottom without also doing it on the top. Let's put extra parentheses in there just to make sure we don't mess it up. And what do we get? We get x minus 4, root x plus 2. And on the bottom, root x times root x becomes simply x, right? And you'll notice that the whole point here is the cross terms cancel. 2 times root x minus 2 times root x, add those up, you get 0. They disappear, minus 2 times 2 x minus 4, right? Probably at this point you're going you're gonna to cancel those and simplify down to root x plus 2. Okay, good. So we have that. Um, one note of caution uh, a sum of squares is always irreducible. So x squared plus a squared, there's nothing you can do. You can't factor. This is irreducible. Um, common mistake that a lot of students will make, again, one of these ones that is sort of born of wishful thinking, is they, they really want to be able to sort of factor things so they can cancel and simplify. And there's going to be a sum of squares in there somewhere, right? x squared. Uh, plus something positive, you can't do anything about it. Okay, you got you just got to leave it alone. There's nothing you can do to simplify, right? Because if this is a positive number, you're adding a square. 
we know that squares are never negative, right? So this can never be zero. And if it can't be zero, it can't have a factor. Okay? Now, what about difference of cubes? Turns out you can do a difference of cubes, and you can also do sum of cubes. Okay? So, unlike sum of squares, right, you can't factor sum of squares, you can factor a sum of cubes, right? The reason is that you can take this cube root of a negative number, right? If I, was set, if I set this equal to zero, tried to solve, I'd have a negative on the other side. I can't take the square root. I can take the cube, the cube root of a negative, though. So difference of cubes looks like the following. x cubed minus a cubed is x minus a. We know that's a factor, because if I put in x equal to a, I get 0. All right? And the other term, you square the first term. Then you multiply with the opposite sign, a times x, and then you square the last term, a squared. Okay. For sum of cubes, same thing with the sign change. This will be x plus a. Right now, minus a is your root, and this becomes minus ax, right? So you just interchange these two signs um, between sum of cubes and difference of cubes. Uh, one important thing to, to point out is that these, um, these quadratic factors that you get from a difference or sum of cubes, these are also always irreducible. Okay? So if you're doing a factoring problem, once you've applied a difference of cubes or sum of cubes formula, you're done. Okay? There's, there's no further factoring that you can do. You stop there. Okay? So as a quick example, somebody gives you something like 27 um, y cubed minus 1 over 8. We say, oh, what do I know about those coefficients? Um, 27 is 3 cubed. 1 over 8 is a half cubed. Okay? So this is the difference of cubes. So it's going to be, so this is 3y and then I cube it. So it's 3y minus a half. Now I square the first term, 9y squared opposite sign in the product. So it's going to be plus 3 over 2y, and then plus a half squared, so plus 1 quarter. Okay? And you factored.